The inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win it! They win it! Set the Cleveland Cavaliers. Michael Jordan hits it at the foul line. That shot by Michael Jordan in May of 1989 eliminated the Cleveland Cavs from the playoffs. It's just one of, man, so many games that we all watched that made Michael a legend. Sports historian Johnny Smith wanted to look at a lot of the other things like race, politics, and fame that led to MJ's greatness. His book is called Jumpman, The Making and Meaning of Michael Jordan. And uh, Johnny joins us this morning. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, you, you, we said it in the introduction. You, you mentioned how, how race played a, played a factor in his life. You know, he was, he was criticized a lot when he played, and even afterwards for really not being a guy that uh, took a lot of stands in that area and really never really wanted to talk about it, seemed to be kind of unaffected by it. But, but privately, was that accurate? How did the, the public persona of Michael Jordan and the private persona in that area uh, clash? Yeah, I think that Jordan was uncomfortable discussing his feelings about racial problems, politics. He was very guarded. And I think part of that was rooted in the fact that he was a lot like his dad, James Jordan. James Jordan was a very friendly man. Uh, he loved to talk to people. But as Michael explained, his father had certain things that he kept private. He had secrets. And Michael said that I got that from my dad. But I think part of it is Jordan's personality that he wants to present a certain image publicly. He wants to be liked by the public. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting is that in 1989, he gave this interview where he talked to a GQ reporter who asked him about how he cultivates his image as this great hero. And Jordan said, you know, I have these nightmares of making this terrible mistake. And my concern is that if I really made a terrible mistake that many of the white parents in America would tell their kids not to look up to me. And so he was always very much aware of this tenuous relationship of being the great black hero in America and the way that many white parents out there may scrutinize the decisions that he made off the court. Uh, how um, will that impact his legacy compared to a Bill Russell or a Muhammad Ali? And, and, and maybe Michael Jordan doesn't even care about that. You know, that's interesting. If you think about the historical activism of black athletes like Muhammad Ali and Bill Russell, who really were products of the 1960s and the civil rights movement, Jordan comes in in a later generation. He's born in 1963, but he really becomes a young man in the late 70s. And so one of the points I make in the book is how, you know, Jordan really belongs to what Barack Obama called the Joshua generation. There's the Moses generation, which was hmm. Martin Luther King's generation, Bill Russell's generation. These were black Americans who identified with protest to affect social change. But the Joshua generation, Jordan's generation that comes after the Moses generation, they didn't necessarily identify with protest. They benefited from the sacrifices of the previous generation. But for Jordan, being black was about aspirations as much as it was about heritage. And for him, his focus was on making racial breakthroughs. And that meant breaking through the walls of corporate America as an endorser. And in the long run, to think about his legacy, what I would argue is despite the fact that Jordan was not known for taking political stands or speaking out against racism during his time with the Chicago Bulls, in the end, his ability to garner these incredible endorsement deals while playing it safe politically helped him build so much wealth that he becomes the first, uh, excuse me, the second black majority owner of an NBA team. And in recent years, he has used his wealth to donate to black organizations, the Ida B. Wells Journalist Foundation to help black journalists, to historically black colleges like Morehouse to the Smithsonian Museum of African-American History and Culture. He's demonstrated that those contributions are important to him. And in the end, I think it's a fundamental difference that for Jordan, who has always in, in, uh, understood charity, for him, his understanding of charity has been less about doing with black organizations than doing for black organizations. He's used his economic influence to make a difference rather than speaking out. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the element of celebrity, too. I mean, you know, in the 90s, you couldn't turn on TV without seeing him in, in three commercials every, every break. But, you know, you write that he wasn't necessarily a big fan of, of that lifestyle. 
Yeah, I think a lot changes for him after he wins his first championship in 1991. That was an NBA Finals that was seen all over the world. Uh, shown in 70 countries, 400 million people are watching this Michael Jordan Magic Johnson show on television. And so on the one hand, his fame is growing to levels that we've never seen in the world of sports, and it creates even more commercial opportunities. On the flip side of that, however, more and more the press is encroaching on his space, and he's uncomfortable with that. He's becoming disillusioned with celebrity. This is a man who really becomes um, someone who locks himself in a hotel room when he's on the road in other NBA cities. His life no longer belongs to him, and it's hard for him to accept. And I think that also helps explain some of the uh, reasons behind why he was reluctant to speak out on social and political issues, because he knew once he engaged in those conversations that the press would want more and more of that from him, and he didn't want to give in. And so he struggled under the weight of the scrutiny, of the publicity. And in the end, as we see in The Last Dance, Jordan says regretfully that in some ways he wishes he never embraced the hero's role. Well, it's fascinating. The book is Jump Man, The Making and Meaning of Michael Jordan. You can follow Johnny on X at Sports History. Do I have that right? Where do you follow it? Is it H-I-S-T-P-R-O-F? Yes, yeah, Sports History. There we go. I thought I was, was going to misspeak there. Thanks, Johnny. Nice Thanks, to talk Johnny. to you. Thanks so much.